Hey everybody, in this topic I'm going to explain the fill function. The fill function fills a range of elements with a specified value. There's three arguments, a beginning address of a data structure, an ending address, then some value. Suppose we have an array of strings. Standard string, I'll name this array foods. I'll give this a maximum size of 10 elements. Then I'll go ahead and fill this array with the same food. I'll fill all 10 elements with the word pizza. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So these all have the same value. Now this really isn't practical, although it does work. Just to demonstrate, I'll display the elements with a for each loop. We're displaying strings for every food element in my array, foods. I would like to display each food element. Then I'll add a new line. So we have 10 elements all filled with pizza. You know, this does work, but it's not practical to initialize all of these elements manually. What if we had an array of 100 elements? I would have to type the word pizza 100 times. There's a few solutions, one of which would be the fill function, which would make this process a lot easier. I'm going to declare this array, but not fill it in quite yet. We have an array of 100 elements to store strings. I'm going to fill all 100 elements with pizza. So we type fill parentheses. Now we need the beginning address of a data structure. Well, that's simply the array name. Then an ending address. So that would be the second argument. We would type the array name plus the size of the array. So plus 100 in this case. Then some value. I'll fill this array with the word pizza 100 times. There we go. All 100 elements have been filled with pizza. Now if you do change the size of this array, let's say we have 150 elements, you would have to go and change that within the fill method too. What I would do in place of adding some number to my array, I will add a size variable. Foods will be index of size. And then we can set some size. Actually better yet, let's make this a constant. Constant int size. Then I'll set this to be 100. Foods plus size. So again, all 100 elements are filled with pizza. Now here's a few exercises. If I'm filling the first half of this array with pizza, we have our beginning address. Then I need to find the halfway point. Foods plus size divided by 2. I'll just go ahead and put that within some parentheses for clarity. Then if I were to run this, the first half of this array contains pizza. And the second half contains nothing. It's empty. To fill the second half of this array with hamburgers, I would invoke the fill function again. We will begin where we left off. Foods plus size divided by 2. The ending address would be foods plus size. We will fill the second half of this array with hamburgers. There we are. The first half is all pizza. The second half is all hamburgers. Here's a challenge round. We'll fill the first third of our array with pizza, the second third will be hamburgers, and the last third will be hot dogs. But 100 doesn't divide by 3 evenly. Just to make this simple, I'll set our array to be 99 elements. We're filling the first third of our array with pizza, size divided by 3. Hamburgers will begin at foods plus size divided by 3, and end at size divided by 3 times 2. Then we'll invoke the fill function one more time. We'll continue where we left off. And we will end at foods plus size. And fill this with hot dogs. Here we go. So we have pizza, hamburgers, then hot dogs. So yeah, that is the fill function. We can fill a range of elements with a specified value. It's great if you have a lot of elements to work with, and you don't manually want to type all the values. If you would like a copy of this code, I'll post this in the comments section down below. And well, yeah, that's the fill function in C++.